Hi, and welcome to the Tomato Timer, a podcast about learning to learn. I'm Zubair from Xenos, and I'm tuning in live with experts from around the world, asking your questions and hearing their stories. All before the timer goes off. 24 minutes and 39 seconds to go. Hi, everyone, and welcome to episode 16 of the Tomato Timer. And today we have joining us Tanisha Sharma. Tanisha is a business analyst and is currently working at the News UK, which includes the big newspapers like The Sun and The Times, but her work has also involved previous clients such as the BBC and even the European Council. Her work especially entails managing projects, which include working with development teams offshore and across many different time zones. And at the University of Westminster, Tanisha studied business information systems. And it's a pleasure for us to have you today. How are you, Tanisha? Thank you so much for having me and giving me this opportunity to share my journey with the young audience. It's amazing to have you. So Tanisha, first of all, can you tell us a little bit about what your current job entails? So currently I'm a junior business analyst at News UK and I'm more looking into the Sun newspaper and helping the back end team. So which is the stuff you might not see on the website, but it's something how we run the main website so it's working with the teams behind the front end work mm-hmm. and I work in collaboration with teams in Bangalore so my actual development team is based in Bangalore which is like five hours or four and a half hours of time yeah. difference but I have to coordinate the work activities with them and our stakeholders so are in London office so it's a bit of back and forth which we do so it's quite challenging but it's interesting and as a BA, so my role is to manage the stakeholder expectations, find out what do they want, how the product should be, and tell that back in Bangalore to the development team so then they can create the product as the stakeholders want. And so it's more about leading the team, guiding them how to create the product and managing the stakeholder expectations, planning sessions with them, making sure that the team knows what they are creating and you can also sometimes I find myself helping in like testing mm. or making sure that the project status is up to date and stakeholders are informed. Yeah. It's quite a lot of juggling, which you do. That sounds really interesting. Actually, some of our listeners are also probably in the same time zone as, as, your, as your developers in Bangalore, because I think quite a few of them are at a four and a half hour or five hour difference with, to us. Um, but yeah, could you, I actually didn't realize that a news organization still would require more aspects of their website or their front end to be developed. What sort of things do you, are you kind of developing all the time? So in terms of what we develop is sometimes it's just like some new features, which might come up and improve like the ranking of the newspaper on Google. So it's improving the SEO performance sometimes. So seeing how we can better, Mm. um, reach out or make up content. And the other times it might just be such as launching the Sun US website, which got launched in January this year. So that was the launch of a new Sun US website because currently the Sun is only available, let's say, in UK, Scottish and Irish. And it's available in only three Sun and then recently got launched in US on in January. Okay, so So that was a new project as well. So it's different sometimes launch of like new websites or it could be launch of feature enhancements. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. So how did you end up here? How did you end up choosing a career like this? And was there kind of, were were your previous experiences built and led you to this? And, you know, how did that happen? Actually, I didn't have a plan to come into media and technology because when I was a student, I wanted to go in banking sector and wanted to study economics at university. Mm. And... During my school time, so when I was 15 years old, that's when everything started and wanted to just experience more of a working world while actually studying and see how I could implement my skills Yeah, and just gain some interpersonal skills kind of. So I told my teachers, I'm really interested, can you help me out? And they were like, there's a scholar scheme that you can apply to, which I applied to. And from there on, I got opportunity to attend banking inside days. For example, for Barclays, HSBC, Goldman Sachs and City. Mm-hmm. And I would really recommend if while you're, if any one of the listeners are in school or in terms of A-level, highly tell your um, 
teachers, talk to them, what do you want to do? And there must be a way that they can help you out and get you experience of working in the world while you're still studying. And from there on, I was able to get, um, yeah. build up my personal interpersonal skills, so like communication, presentation, team working skills, but just getting uh, involved in different kind of activities. Mm. From there on, I started to just have a goal like every summer, I just wanted to do something and build my CV or just the experience. So it, it might not be something, and it, you're such a young age to bear, tell me, you can't really justify to your parents or anyone, like how do you see being involved in different inside days while you're still studying? Yeah. How does that bring any benefit? Yeah. So, but I still, I still just kept going and I quite enjoyed it. And I must say that even if you do a bit of volunteering work or internships, uh, when you come into the working world, people really value what experience and skills you have rather than the grades which you have. Yeah. So if you're still studying, make sure you still get a bit of exposure. Leading on from banking in the side days, I started to do some work experience at um, as a research intern in one of the attend, which is volunteering organization in London so I was working at their head office and just helping them to find out okay. how they can relocate yeah and then that research project and internship even if it was a volunteering one it really built my skills and led me to working at stream mg which is a media company so you can see there's been a very variety of a background coming in banking to researching and then landing up in media yeah. Stream MG was where I built up lots of my skills and working with different clients, such as the BBC, Department of Work and Pensions, European Council. Mm. And that is area which evolved me as a person and my skills. And I was really interested in news and media. So landed up in News UK then. And then I'm just looking at the newspaper side. Yeah, that that's an amazing journey. And I, and I think... Uh, across all the, the guests we've had over the past couple of weeks, one of the things that has resonated and is always kind of said with conviction and, and, and like most important piece of advice is to take opportunities, especially at the age we're at. Um, and I know that these times are tough. Yeah. Lots of my friends, um, people who are graduating with their jobs and their lots of internships have been cancelled and stuff. But at the same time, that doesn't limit that this all this time gives us an opportunity to discover new talents, discover new passions, explore things. There's just so many amazing websites out there helping you develop and learn new courses and new skills, whether it's you know something really you know very technical like programming all the way to soft skills like public speaking and team working. I just, I'm, I'm so appreciative of you once again, showing off how important it is to, to, do, to go out and try to do as much experience as possible while you're studying because you know, A levels and GCSEs will put your foot into university, but everything after that. Exactly. That's amazing. So I, I actually want to build on and, and find out more when you got into these areas and these experiences. How how did it feel as a female, as as a as a woman in tech, and were there any challenges you faced there? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of um, when you're still studying, you don't know exactly how the technology sector works or what is kind of like the work environment. So you're not sure if uh, that's an area which you should explore. But because of the time when I was studying, technology was more of a growing area. And yeah. I really enjoy working in technology because it gives you the ability to like have make things more accessible. And there's ever-growing potential in technology which you can use to revolutionize like different areas of your life. Mm -hmm. But you don't actually see many female leaders coming into the technology sector. There's lack of visibility of like female role models you can see in STEM education and the careers field. Yeah. But while just coming into women in tech as a technology, I felt many times just being the only women on the table and in many meetings. So which was quite a bit amazing. It was just like there's no women here. So at my past company also I was the only female in the client services. Oh my gosh. So it gives you a bit of like, of like, why are females not coming up? 
maybe it's just like how people perceive the technology industry but i would love to clarify that it's not as it sounds daunting to come into a technology sector and females do have multi diversity in terms of skill set and thought and we need more females out coming into technology because females have different kind of skill sets from and traits from the men for example but there is a stereotype that sometimes women needs to be a bit quiet as compared to boys and if you see a woman leading and more commanding and sometimes there's a perception women is not really has given up on their female traits sometimes like empathy and warmth but you can really have women which yeah both and with traits of empathy and warmth they can be assertiveness so women really are more empathetic than men so there is a way that even if like um women can try to come into technology they do bring in diversity of skill set and thought which is really needed on the table and we should be proud of the unique skills that we bring to the table because that's what gives you way to true diversity and inclusion absolutely and and you're absolutely right in terms of well n- not just in terms of dread diversity but the fact that the the end products and services that you create will be hugely different and more useful like how can you just ignore 50% of the world's population when you create and develop a, a new solution it's it's ridiculous and i'm we're so grateful for you being championing this kind of important role uh, as a woman in tech and we heard a very similar story last week as well as as we realized that there's so few representations of uh, role models of women in tech and women in stem and across all these kind of different facets inspirational thank you so much for sharing that i wanted to kind of start dive, diving a bit little little deeper into your current work and you you kind of mentioned all these large scale global projects and wondered how how did you manage the stress and and the the workload when it came to such huge projects and such uh, you know amazing clients and really high highly recognized clients i i would say like i'm really appreciative of the support that i've got from all my peers while just managing all these projects especially the male peers and it's the term like i must admit that managing a uh, work with balancing with life in the first case just when i started just after graduating from university and just juggling it mm. in the first work um career it wasn't that easy because you're just coming out of uh, university and you don't know how to exactly manage it it's more of a navigating part that i'm still trying to work out yeah. you just have to make sure that you switch off from your work and just come back to your normal life and give the family time to friends and family once your work has switched off so you just need to make sure you have a bit of barrier between your work and life mm-hmm. and it's very important to make sure you have that for your mental health space as well i didn't actually mention i started to work just when i started to just I basically i graduated in 2018 and had my last exam on a friday and i had the job offer in my hand while still preparing for the final year exams wow okay that's amazing yeah so on friday it was my last exam and on monday i still remember it was my first day at work and i was like i'm so excited i'm not going to take any break no weeks off let's just go start and work in <laughs> i must admit make sure when you take a bit of time off and at least a week off or something when you start working because you miss out all the time that you could have on any other things while coming into the working world if you you see what i mean and it's you need to make sure you would have have a work and life balance as well when you start working out but i'm sure you work it out as you grow more into working mm and and what about these what about the specific skill sets uh, and skills that you've developed over time in the kind of in the realm of project and account management the, the amount of skills that you need main i would say is communication skills to communicate in a more clear way to any person what do you want that is a most um important skill i would say not just for being able to project manage or do account men account management but you need to have the communication skill in any other job sector or whatever job role you take up and especially you need to have a bit of um team leadership skill 
mm-hmm. or building and leadership skills because you need to be able to work in a team. If you can't work in a team, you can't just go alone as well. You need a bit of team support. So communication, team working skills and leadership are the three main, main key areas, I would say. And that's not just something which, yeah, sorry, go on. Yeah, and, and those, all three of them uh, come under the realm of soft skills as well, right? They, they're the interpersonal skills that we all need to develop. And they're things that are not taught at school uh, or in our kind of academic life. Exactly. You won't learn those kind of skills while you're working. Um, be just studying at school or university you need to get a bit of exposure to the working world in order to build that mm. i must say you don't have to wait for starting to take up a job in order to build those kind of skills because there's lots of other ways you can build your experience and you can still build it in this coronavirus economy i would say yeah you can try some light free online courses there's lots of stuff on linkedin learning or websites such as future learn where you can get courses from different universities online Mm -hmm. you can maybe start a blog even or like a youtube channel about any topic that you're passionate about and make sure you contact people in like different industries you can do that through linkedin yeah if you're interested just ask them about different job responsibilities that they do what kind of skills do you need i have done that myself as well reaching out to people just to find out How did they get into the job? What kind of skills do you need? You can sign up for different volunteering opportunities. There's lots out. Yeah. Um, And you can apply to any kind of, even a volunteering internship to build your skills. So you will have some kind of background and experience that you can talk about in your future job applications or interviews. Yeah. And I must say LinkedIn is a very good platform for connecting with any people in terms of building your network or just because mm. if you build your network, you get the opportunity to talk to different people, learn about how they got there. But you are open to different opportunities, which you can then you shouldn't say no to any opportunities. You take up that opportunity and it allows you to even bounce off any ideas you have with people that you can trust. Yeah. So it's a very good source of a platform. Yeah. Actually, LinkedIn is the platform that how I found my last two jobs. So I'm thankful to LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow, that's amazing. Yeah, I'm a. I, I will also kind of like agree with Tanisha and say that LinkedIn is a pretty awesome place just because of its growth in nature as a as a communication tool specifically aimed at building networks and connections with interests specific to you. And oh, there, there's not a lot much to say, but like I've had, I can't even imagine the number of meetings, calls and partnerships I've set up just because of sending a direct message or connecting with someone on LinkedIn. Like literally uh, I have, uh, well, yeah, it's, it's a pretty strong place to go. Um, and I would recommend, even if you think it's too early on, just go on, set up a profile, start connecting with people that you think um, make sense and are relevant to you and start sharing stuff. And uh, I would also like to kind of like, b- b- both things that you've said to me are, are things that I, I love doing. So blogging as well is such an important thing. You know, you're creating content, you're sharing, you're putting it out there, you're talking about what you like and love doing and people are going to read it. People who are interested in it are going to be attracted to you and they're going to like push you in whichever direction or help you get to the right people in right places. So, sorry, absolutely. a little bit of my own bit as well. But yeah, <laughs> no, absolutely. I agree with you. So um, I'm going to go back uh, a little bit to your bi- biography. And you said that you are a creative business analyst. So we wanted to understand, especially because you're working with developers and in tech, where does that creative element come in? And how do you manage creativity when you're also trying to develop something that's, you know, functional in real life how do you uh, you know how do you kind of like restrict those brilliant ideas and almost fantastical ideas and make it something that's actually functional and realizable in terms of creativity like creativity is a thing which you cannot stop it just flows through in your mind and mm. in order to be creative it just comes sometimes naturally to you and you can use those kind of creativity skills just to come up with new solutions or ideas of a product or how you can better lead your team or make any good difference or a new difference. So it's all about bringing up with new ideas, but also juggling it with the expectations of people and making sure it's, mm-hmm. those ideas are kind of feasible because if they're not, you can't pursue them. So you have to make sure that your ideas 
are something which can be validated. But you have to bring in that creative side when coming up with new ideas. And there are restrictive resources, so you need to make sure that whatever idea you come up with, it can justify why you actually, what can you do with those kind of ideas? And if it's valid and is achievable within the restricted resources that you have. Yeah. So you have to be enough creative in coming up with different ideas. That makes sense. And, and making sure that it's applicable to, it in, to the end user and makes sense. That's, that's, really, that's really powerful. Now, the fact that you are in media and, and working for one of the biggest organizations delivering news in, in the UK and internationally as well, how has this kind of, how has COVID affected your, your personal work life, but also the organization itself? How is it dealing with all this kind of misinformation, fake news that is rife in these times? Sure. So in terms of COVID-19, it's been very exciting. It's made me started to do working from home and it's my first time working from home as well. So it's a very different experience and I'm missing the office environment and seeing the people around. Yeah. I'm sure you are also missing any of your university friends as well. <laughs> yeah. so it's a different experience, but I'm trying to adjust and adapt to it now. So we've gone into it a bit, few months now. So you're used to it, but it definitely has increased my screen time. So you, you have the, sometimes the urge to reply back to messages instantly. You have to be like there and be responsive. Yeah. Also because I'm working with Bangalore, which is in India, the development team. So you have to coordinate with them. And sometimes it's a different experience because they might have internet connections or a power cut. So you have to manage your team and you have to make sure that your team spends uh, time off as well so giving them the support to tackle with this kind of different environment which no one is used to Mm -hmm. but also um, in terms of how news is responding to this news uk responding to coronavirus yeah we have different brands and titles and we're trying to make sure the titles are producing content and broadcasting in engaging content but also this is the crucial time where the audiences are turning to us to make sure that the news we provide is not fake news making sure that the news is realistic so a lot of audience has come to us especially the digital traffic is very high at this time of course yeah and there's increased in demand for digital subscriptions you can say for the times the sunday times each of our radio stations as well, the audiences are responding really well. We have launched new podcast as well, which is Stories of Our Times, which is at number one in the Apple charts. Oh. So there's different ways and we're also doing a lot of uh, fundraising activities. Home, mm. Sun and the Virgin Radio recently announced the big thank you tour so it's about three concerts which will take place in october at wembley arena manchester and glasgow and all the tickets will be given away to about thirty-five thousand key workers with the sun's partnership so there is a lot of big acts which is going on in the news uk and responding it to the coronavirus breakout yeah and and specifically, um, I know a little bit because we had a. I was lucky enough to have a chat with you early on. There's obviously when I, I'm and I lived quite close by to the to the Nightingale Hospital. So if to some of our listeners, um, the NHS is the UK's health system, and because of the virus and and the kind of increased demand on healthcare, they converted uh, one of the biggest exhibition centres. In, the, in London and probably the UK into a hospital. And that exhibition center, it's called Excel, was actually where my exams happen every year. So it's quite weird to not be doing exams and also my exam center being turned into a, into a hospital. But it's called the NHS Nightingale Hospital. And I wanted to just a little bit about what you said to me um, early on about what you, what you were doing on that front. In terms of Ibis Stars London Excel, it's near the Nightingale Hospital. And... It's managing by my dad. So in terms of helping just with him with on social media content, what kind of content we yeah. can write. So to give a background, Ibis Styles Hotel is open currently and is proudly supporting the NHS workers for their daily efforts and tireless yeah. efforts, which they're doing, which is really commendable. 
and the government's effort in fighting against the COVID-19. We're continuing and providing our service and hospitality to all the healthcare key workers which are staying there and offering them discounted rates and free breakfast. And recently there's also been the community of partnership with local charities that we are working with for NHS Nightingale staff and key workers. And it was recently featured on Sky News as well. If anyone maybe saw on Sky News, you would be aware about it as well. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, that's just amazing. So Tanisha, I'm so sorry, but as it is with these things, um, a Pomodoro is not very long and it's in 25 minutes, you can't really get really far, but it's been amazing to hear a little bit about your story and inspiring us all once again. Thank you so much for being with us. Um, is there anything you'd like to say just to kind of give us a final piece of advice as listeners? Thank you so much for having me, but I would really love to give a good advice, which is just to dream big, aim high, because even if you cannot achieve your aim, it will still make sure that you reach in a good enough place. And yeah. make sure more women come into technology because we really need it. And I know we are still young and university students or college students might be listening to this. So you make sure you make mistakes and take risks because some things you can only learn in a storm and navigate the waters of uncertainty. So don't be afraid of moving out of your comfort zone and failing. That's amazing. And just ask questions, more questions, because that's the only way you know what you like mm -hmm. and explore. Any applications maybe you're listening to or any area you want to go yeah. into. So yeah, ask questions. Amazing. That's Those are such amazing pieces of advice. Thank you so much for being with us. And thank you to all our listeners for joining us, um, even though... I know some of you will be fasting and, and rushing to break your fast quite soon. I still have quite a few hours to go. Ramadan Kareem. Bye-bye, guys. Bye. Thank you so much. And happy Ramadan Mubarak to everyone. And that's another episode of the Tomato Timer. If you'd like to ask your questions and join us live next week, join the Xenos Discord server. The invite link is in the description. And to learn more about Xenos and how a bunch of students are on a mission of making quality education accessible to all, go to xenos.org. Bye for now.